Dennis, nice to have you back again. Mariko, nice to be back. Hi. One more show, one more week. And today we are going to talk about Creatures of the Night, the one, a fan favorite. It's probably yeah. an album that is always in the top five of every ranking, every any anyone does about okay. you know Kiss okay. albums. Um, and there's there's a very simple reason for it. It's heavier and it's very inspired. It's a good record musically, you know. So um, uh, let's situate the the moment in history. So. The Elder didn't work. <laughs> it was a huge disappointment. Yeah. Um, and also, it was not the first misstep. Even though I love Dynasty and Unmasked, personally, I can understand why it was a misstep in terms of uh, the objective audience. Basically, they, they uh, kind of went for a more popular, more radio-friendly sound, and also the, the photo shoots were more colorful, uh, cartoonish oriented. So a lot that alienated a lot of the rock fan base. Yeah. Which, uh, you know what, it's, I understand why that happens. Sometimes you lose touch because, you know, you become a professional, you become rich, you're no longer struggling, right? So you right. lose touch with what is going on on the street. So I think that's what happened with Paul, Gene, Ace, and, and Bill O'Coin. They were handling this, you know, massive company. They were no longer struggling. So they were like, anti um, you know, indulging their excesses and success. So from the human point of view, it's understandable, but it was a misstep. So anyways, so they decided to go back to the roots to do a rock record to, you know, gain credibility with the rock audience. And that was Creatures of the Night. So my first question would be, was that a conscious effort when they approached to you to do the artwork? Meaning, did I tell you, look, uh, we made a mistake with the previous three records, so now we're gonna do something more heavier, darker, and more rough? Did they tell you that at no. the earlier state? No. <laughs> um, I, what I got was the title, and, um, and then you could you could let your mind go uh, just. From the title, and uh, we are creatures of the night. So they weren't calling it anything like, uh, uh, you know, dance party <laughs> or something like that. But so you so reacted you, to the title. You could take it from the title. It sounded, you know, heavy. we're creatures from of the night, you know, and it, it sounded like it was going to be tough. And uh, uh, I personally didn't really design for the music that much, I just designed. I, I just let my mind go. I, I just, let's see where it will take me. So, you know, a lot of people would always ask me, didn't you listen to the music before you designed the uh, album cover? And they're always a little disappointed when I say no. Uh, a lot of times there wasn't much music when I was starting. They were still working on it, you know. And uh, I designed book covers. And people will say, well, did you read the book before you did the cover? So you could, you know, really... As the most I ever got was a paragraph, a synopsis. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I got to title Creatures of the Night, I tried to visualize uh, what that would mean uh, in terms of a picture or an album cover. And, uh, you know, I mentioned this before. Uh, what happened as we went along, me and then my boss, the agency, and Bill O'Quine and his management company, as we three... Uh, moved along with the success of KISS, uh, they, they seem to get more involved in, in what I do. When we first started, and I, my first album cover was Alive, the, 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 uh, the fourth one that they did. Uh, you know, they gave me a picture and they said, design an album and it's a double fold and, you know, do it. So I did it and it was a big success. Nobody gave me any idea. They did pretty much. Put, they pretty much let you run free with yeah, it. Just, you know, and, and I think they were, at that point, it was just like, who cares? Just do it. It'll be all right, I'm sure, you know, whatever. And uh, uh, so it was a big hit. Then we had to do Destroyer. Um, Destroyer was the first one I did from concept, you know, because Alive already was just pictures. And so 
I did Destroyer and I was really proud of it. And we did it from concept and came out great. And uh, it was a successful album, sold a lot. Uh, everybody loved the cover. And so the next one was Rock and Roll Over, same thing. I switched gears. I wanted to do a completely different kind of art and feeling. So we did it. And uh, they left me alone completely. Although I showed them Michael Durrett's work first, just to, I didn't want to surprise them too much because it was very different. And they, they were a little worried about it, but they let me go. So we did it. And then when it was done, they loved it. Um, then when Love Gun came along, uh, they all said, use Ken Kelly again. So now they were getting involved. The first uh, one, I see. because they, they, were, they were basking in the success uh, and they were feeling like they, they should have an opinion, I guess. And by they, I don't mean uh, Kiss. I mean Howard Marks and Bill Coin. And you know what? Uh, if I have to guess about that, I mean, by 1977, which end of 77, which when uh, it was when uh, Love Gun came out, they already have embraced the comic book concept. So can Kelly fit into, the, into that character? They, they already had the comic book out and the, I'm sure they were already planning the movie. So they said, oh, you know, it makes sense. Bring him back, you know? Yeah, well, you know, and they loved Destroyer so much. And then when we did Rock and Roll Over, I mean, I think they liked it, but they, they, they really loved the, that comic romantic, you know, right. Rosetta superhero, you know, uh, fantasy art uh, kind of thing. I, and as I said before, I didn't want to use them so quickly after Destroyer, but I gave in and we did. And it's a great cover and everything. I just think it should have been done later. But you know what? It's a, it's a good thing that you used them right at that time, because otherwise, if you don't have used them in Love Gun, it probably would never happen after that. Uh, that could be. Yeah, right. Right. Um, with the other albums and what have you. But exactly. so the reason I bring that up is a prelude to Creatures is that when we're doing creatures, they were all, they were all in on it. And I was listening to too much noise from the outside. Mm. Um, and, and, and to the point where, and Bill McCoy did this a couple of times. Uh, he went out and he just hired some sketch artists. I didn't even know he was doing it. And he gave them the title. And then I suddenly they brought in these sketches and they showed them to me. What do you think of these? For the these sketches, they were very nice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as I recall, they were kind of done on a black background, on a black board, and then he used color pencils or something, you know. And the four guys were there, and they were, oh, maybe standing on a raggedy ridge, and there was a nighttime, and uh, they looked sort of heroic, and the sketches were done well. Whoever sketched it had a, a good artistic ability. I still don't know who it was. Uh, I don't even think I knew who it was when at the time. And I thought they were pretty nice, but... Uh, uh, there was the four guys, you know, like this, in a scene this big, and the four guys, and there was a lot of scene. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, I didn't say anything. I said, oh, these are really nice sketches, you know. I, but I think they rejected them. They, meaning maybe Kiss and, and Bill, they just sort of said, well, uh, you think of something. My original thoughts on it was, um, well, I'd like to put them in a, in a deep, dark forest, we like the Black Forest, or maybe something like a, a swamp that you see down in Louisiana or uh, Florida or someplace like that uh, with those swampy trees that uh, you're very familiar with, I know. And, and, and creatures and creatures all behind them and around and in, in the forest and peeking out and, uh, and uh, nocturnal creatures and nocturnal creatures like my cat. You know, if you have a cat and you take pictures of your cat with a flash you're going to see the eyes, they light up like re reflectors. You've seen it a million times. It's something inside the cat's eye. And a lot of uh, animals have that. And, and so uh, I said, oh, the glowing eyes. And I remember the scene, uh, actually, where I thought it was Bambi. And yeah. it turned out to be Snow White, where she is uh, lost in the forest uh, for a brief time. And she's terrified. And, and then these little creatures are peeking at her from behind the bushes. And they all have glowing eyes. It's a scene where uh, Snow White, I think, run to the to the to the forest, and then she falls asleep. And what yeah, is right. And she's escaping the the woodman who was gonna kill her. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I want to do that, but scary. So I, I did some little sketches myself, 
uh, trying to get a feeling for it. I don't think they ever saw the light of day uh, because I didn't kill myself on them. They were not good enough to really, you know, uh, propose the concept. So you don't have those sketches anymore. No, not the rough sketches you did. No, 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 no. I mean, the ones that were done be behind my back, they may still be in the Kiss archive somewhere. Because I didn't draw huh? But but did you do sketches yourself based based on your idea? Uh, I didn't do the one in the swamp and the creatures. No. Oh, I see. Okay. I did it. I, I think I did doodle around on my drawing board, but I never brought it to enough fruition to show anybody because they weren't good enough. They were just for my mind. I see. To okay. see, uh, meh. and and I kind of I kind of liked where I was going with that, uh, but I don't know if I brought it up to anybody. I, I don't know, but something made me switch. If I have them in the swamp with the creatures and everybody's eyes are sort of glowing a little bit, like nocturnal creatures, um, I, I said, there, everybody's going to be a little too small. Right. And uh, the eyes won't have really a, any kind of an impact. It's going to be a little, little white. Little dots. dots. Yeah. So I said, that's no good. And I think, I think really here the the punch of this uh, idea is the glowing eyes. I think that's the whole thing. So I said, you know, if I make it blue, like nighttime, almost monochromatic, and then the eyes are glowing and it's just their faces, I said, I think that'll be more powerful, a little more graphically strong. And the other one was nice, it was narrative, and I love it, and you could get a lot of detail, and you could kind of album cover you could look at for hours maybe. Uh, but I went for the big and the punch. So then I did a comprehensive layout. And I took pictures of them that I had and I made photostats of their faces, uh, different sources. I cut those photostats up and I arranged four faces on a, on a black board. I pasted them down. So now I had their more or less their white faces, a little bit of hair, and it was black, black back there. And then I, uh, uh, and it was a negative paste up. And I sent it out and I got my positive back, so black background. And then I had to spray, I wanted to make it blue. Uh, we had spray mark. Do you ever use that product? Oh, like marker, but in spray? It's magic marker in a spray can. I, I've never seen anything like that. But That's what it is. Okay. They got these little spray cans about this big, not full size like Krylon. So little basically it will, it will cover just the white and not the black. Right. So when you spray it, it just hits the white, the black, it disappears on the black. All the white becomes blue. I masked off the eye so that it would remain white underneath. Uh -huh. So I used the, uh, you know, whatever. I probably used tracing paper and, and one coat rubber cement. I didn't have real frisket paper like airbrush artists use. Uh, I, I would imagine the end result would look sort of pop, pop art. <laughs> kind of on the well, but it was a photo. It still had photographic quality to it. Oh, I see. Okay. And the spray mark, we had several cans and colors we used for different reasons around. You know, it was just a cheap way to do airbrush kind of if you didn't. I eventually bought an airbrush, but we didn't use it much. But um, the spray mark had a very fine spray, not like a spray paint. Mm. Uh, the, the, I guess the color itself was a very fine particulate. Uh, the nozzle was probably a little bit better on that than it would be on a spray can. So when you spray it, it came out nice and fine, like a mist. Uh, God help us. I don't know how we survived it because the air was full of paint. <laughs> and and spray mark and we were breathing it constantly I know. and rubber cement and spray glue and fixative and we didn't have any sort of ventilation and the real real photos the real studios real graphic art studios they had what they call a spray booth and they would put their art in there and it was like a box and it would suck all the bad stuff out and they would spray it and we didn't have that we just sort of Probably held it up and sprayed, you know. So I sprayed it blue. Mm -hmm. The eyes remain white. And then I took, I did take an airbrush and uh, and I let the eyes were, were masked off, but I let the the spray white leak under a little bit so that it was a glow. 
and I, yeah, I had to be careful. And it came out pretty good. Uh, the blue uh, spray mark can spit a little bit. So there was some spatter here and there. Uh, so, but it was okay. Good enough for a, a, a show and tell. So then the guys came in to, uh, to look over my shoulder to see what I was doing uh, on my drawing board. And they brought Michael Jackson with them. The producer, not the singer. No, right, exactly. That's why I remember his name so well. He came in and they all liked it. But they thought that I, that they thought maybe we should use what I did for the cover. And I'm saying, no, no, it's going to be a photograph. It's going to be a, a beautiful photo. I'm going to, I'm going to arrange and we're going to take, we're going to set it up. I said, you, you don't want to use this. It's a little too rough. I understand sometimes you want to have that gritty feeling, a little grunge, you know, and I think that's what they were hoping for. And I said, no, 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 let's do the photo. So they, they acquiesced, but uh, I get where they were coming from. And it wasn't quite good enough. I think I would have to do it again with that in mind and then try to replicate that, but a little bit better, you know? Right. I could see that in my head not working. And I said, let me just get the photo taken. Uh, so that, that's the direction we went. Then it was my task to figure out without retouching. Uh, I didn't want to do it with retouching. How, you know, no computers. Once again, uh, boys and girls, uh, no computers. I had to figure out once again how to do this from the get-go in photography. So I, call, I called the photographer up, uh, Matthew Klein, who we had used on some other jobs, non-show business related. He was a, a food photographer. And he also shot Wall Street people in their offices and stuff like that. But I knew Matthew was a good guy and I, I just wanted him to, uh, to see if he could figure a way to take people wearing white makeup and in photography, make it blue. I said, you know, Matthew, suppose you use the wrong film Indoor instead of outdoor, I know that'll give it a blue cast, and or outdoor instead of indoor, or whatever. The, to, to, the tungsten uh, uh, film had a, a a blue blue filter. What kind? So if you used uh, film for tungsten, meaning light bulb. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside, it will it will be blue. Yeah, right. And that's what I was saying. Use the outdoor instead of indoor, and what was shoot it indoor, and it should turn everything blue, like ectochrome or whatever, instead of kodachrome. But I, yeah, I don't know. So um, I went to his studio. And, uh, I put on white makeup. You did. <laughs> okay. Just to see, you know, it's a test, right? We're doing a test. I sat there and he used different kind of film and we had rolls of film and it was pretty grotesque looking. It was horrible. Uh, didn't really turn blue enough. Uh, so I gave up on that idea. Then, uh, I got Bernard Vidal, mm -hmm. and who I should have gone to to begin with. Um, and I said, uh, Bernard, here's the, here's the task, here's the problem. He said, uh, I'm gonna put blue gels over the lights. He said, it's just gonna put blue light on them. It's gonna work perfectly. I know it, exactly what you mean. And I showed him my layout. I said, if you say it's gonna work, Bernard, I, I, I believe you. And, and it worked, it worked great, it worked great. And so we set it up that way. So um, uh, at this point, you were setting up for the picture of the cover. Uh, did you do the, the loudest band in the world picture the same? Was that the same session, the same photo shoot? Yes, it was. Uh, and also uh, another picture, which was like on a little stage that we built. Mm -hmm. And they stood on that. And uh, it, it was plain, kind of plain vanilla. There was nothing to it. He had it painted black. Uh, I don't even think we had a drum kit or anything. They, they had no instruments. So we were going to just stand them on that. And that, that didn't quite work because there wasn't enough, enough to it. Uh, even Paul, who, who liked to get involved, and, and that's a good thing, uh, looked at it and he said, gee, this is, you know, what is it? I said, yeah, I know. So we found we had Mylar uh, tape, uh, Bernard did, the big fat Mylar tape, silver. So we wrapped the stage, you made a couple of stripes of mylar on it, at least, you know, something. To make it pop up. Yeah, we shot a few pictures that way. And I have, I have one with the band. Uh, 
that way. Uh, oh, oh, that's the one with the, with the creature's costumes. Okay, got it. Because There's the four guys standing there. You, you weren't even really aware they were on a stage. The whole uh, effort going into building that thing was wasted, really wasted. Nothing to it. And then we went to another location. We were in a great big space that uh, Bernard had rented because his studio was tiny. The right. studio was like, uh, like that room that you're in, maybe not even as big. I see. So uh, we rented space all the time and we had a big space. And so we, we shot the album cover over here. When we were done with that, we went to the stage, shot some stuff, and then we went behind the stage to another spot uh, where we did the loudest band in the world uh, poster. So, uh, right. So, which is probably one of my favorite photo shoots of the band. I think it came out really well. It's very powerful. I, know, I like it too. It's mysterious. The poses are right. Everything about that. Sometimes thing. something, it just works out, you know? So was there, was there ever a consideration to use that one as a cover or no? You always went for the, for the, for the zoom to the. I pit. think we stuck with the original plan. Gotcha. Four so, faces, eyes glowing. That's the cover. So the, the other one was always intended for promotion, not a, a promotion of some kind and wound up to be the poster. I think, I don't know if we said, here's the poster. I don't know. I don't think so, but who knows? I don't remember that detail. Mm -hmm. I remember we had the background, the moon. Yeah. Bernard knew a guy who painted backdrops, uh, Italian guy, Sandro La Ferla. Is that an Italian name or maybe it's uh, Spanish? No, it is Italian. Yeah, Sandro La Ferla. And Sandro came and he had the thing set up and he was, he was painting it on the spot. He didn't bring it. He created it, you know, <laughs> he made the moon, he made a little sky stuff, you know. He has, a, he rents backdrops that he's painted. He rents them out. And he does all these beautiful skies, clouds, gorgeous. They look like photographs. It's all airbrush, all spray. Uh, sunset, sunrise, yellow, gorgeous blue, red, you know, or just blue with white puffy clouds, on and on and on. He has all these backdrops and he's very talented. So Sandro did it. Uh, Diana Ross was there for the shoot. She came. And so when you look at the creatures of the night photo, uh, she's right there, <laughs> right off the camera, this much, <laughs> right there. Did Diana Ross then hire you and uh, to, to do some artwork for her? Right. Um, after he stopped seeing Diana, uh, Diana still had ties to our office, uh, business-wise. My boss, Howard Marks, negotiated a big record contract for her with RCA Records. So he kind of, uh, I guess for a short time, managed her. I think he got her the biggest contract ever for a single performing artist, a solo, maybe solo female performing artist. I don't know, but the biggest ever RCA records. So uh, she was still tied to us uh, business wise. And Howard's uh, other, Howard's fiance, girlfriend, Roseanne was uh, like the account executive in the ad agency. So she became sort of, like a personal assistant to Diana Ross. So she handled a lot of things for her. So um, uh, while Diana was still with us, uh, we designed uh, a record album for her. Then uh, Howard died, 1990, uh, and Roseanne continued doing things for Diana Ross. So she had a little job uh, being like an assistant. You know, setting up situations and calling and doing and organizing stuff and whatever, photos, photo shoots, things like that. And uh, I was out of work. I mean, I was freelancing or trying to freelance. Uh, the office had closed. Oh, so this was in the 90s. Yeah. And then through Roseanne, uh, I designed uh, a couple of uh, tour books for, for Diana. And uh, they, they were nice. They came out nice. Uh, so, okay, so let's go back to Creatures of the Night. Uh, I wanted to ask you one, a couple more questions about the photo shoot itself. Is the picture on the cover a composite or is one shot? No, I think I think I had to uh, use, um, I, think I, I think I had to make a composite. Now, I don't recall who I switched out and who I kept, but it might be two guys from the original and then two guys from other shots. I see. Put in. I, probably is that. 
Well, the, uh, it was usually Paul for sure. <laughs> that had to come from another shot, you know. And I mean, he would say things like, you know, the curls in my hair, this curl looks so much better than that. And I don't know, really, literally, just like this hair better. So, all right, you know, uh, it wasn't that bad of a retouch because it was all black and. And also, yeah. and also the positions were similar in every shot. So oh, yeah, I mean, and, and the scaling and all of that. And, and it's black. You can almost do it without retouching if you cut it carefully and didn't show the cut edge, you know, almost. So uh, we put it together. Uh, we made the eyes glow. That was the only other retouching that had to be done. Obviously, that, that didn't happen in the photograph. Uh, so made the eyes glow. I was pretty happy with it. Actually, it's one of my favorites for uh, one good reason. Yeah. Which is that it also came from a pure place. It came from idea, concept. Uh, it was not a committee yelling at me and telling me that we want to see this and that it was just me. And so uh, I could claim ownership of that, you know, more than some others. It was, just, it, was, it was all me. And so that made me happy and I was proud of it. I'm also proud of it because it's really one of the three best covers, I think, out there. So it's a, it is a good cover. And then you did some retouching for the eyes, right? The, the, you painted white. With yeah, the yeah, they had to be airbrushed. Yeah. Right. To make them glow. So um, I've seen very little outtakes, none, I think, of this uh, photo shoot. You know, it was a very efficient photo shoot. I had a tight layout going in for the cover. So there was no fooling around. It was like Dynasty in a way. There was no fooling around. I, nobody said, okay, now do this. Now you do that. Now look this way. Now change positions. Now stand up. Now sit down. You know, what you would ordinarily do in a photo shoot when you don't really have a, a solid idea. You go and you move people around and you hope for the best at the end of the day. But this was like, put your head there, move your head up a half an inch. You know, I mean, that's the way it was. So uh, for the for the picture on the cover, were they in costume or they were wearing just in plain black? I think it was plain. No, wait, they had a, wait, 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 wait. I went through this before. They had to have their costumes because we did the, we did the poster shot. And so they were, they costumes. went and changed or anything. They just, you know. I'm trying to pick uh, to picture Diana Ross right next to and making uh, making making coffee. She was there, and, and the lights. It was funny because the lights were on the guys, and there were blue blue gels over the lights, and some of it was catching her and casting a shadow on the wall adjacent to the guys. You know, I was like, you know, and and it was casting a shadow of her profile on the wall, <laughs> and it was so cool. And I made everybody look at it. <laughs> I said, Diana, don't move. I said, look, <laughs> look, it was cool. It was are, you, cool. are you still in touch with Bernard? No, I tried to find him. Uh, I can't find him. No, wow. I can't find him. How, uh, he, may, he may have retired. He may be, he went, maybe he went back to France. He's, he was French. Mm -hmm. uh, he, had a, he had a terrible tragedy uh, while we still knew him. His, both parents were killed in a car crash. Shit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I remember when he was in the office, in Roseanne's office, talking to her, and I had to go in there. Maybe they called me in. I don't know. And Bernard was there, and I had heard that news, and it was it was recent. And I, you know, what do you say to somebody? I mean. Yeah. And it was horrific. I mean. There's nothing you can say. <laughs> and uh, I just looked at Bernard. I said, Bernard. I, I heard about your tragedy. I'm very, very sorry. He just looked at me, nodded his head, you know. Uh, but I don't know what happened to Bernard. I, I, I have Googled him and uh, I can't find him. You, I'd love to talk to Bernard. Yeah. Do you think he uh, kept a lot of the outtakes he did for kids, not just for pictures of the night, but also the other photo shoots? Or did he, did he, gave them all back to Kim. Well, I remember when I got the shots after a session, we got a lot of shots. You know, if we shot on 120 Hasselblad, I mean, we got strips and strips and strips of photos. So if he kept any, that couldn't have been much because, of, you know, I got a lot of the shots. So I don't know. 
I don't know. Maybe he kept something just for keepsake, but I don't know. Interesting. So uh, let me put to rest uh, uh, an old legend that has been around for a while. And I, yep. think, I think you've talked about it before, but I want to just uh, set the record straight uh, just for the last time. There is a children's book published in 1999 <laughs> that it's eerily similar to the cover and it's also titled Creatures of the Night. Was there any relations to the Kiss cover? Yeah, I went to the bookstore, I saw the children's book and I copied it. So no, <laughs> the answer is no, okay. The answer is no. Uh, I was shocked when I saw that. Somebody brought it up years ago. And I said, holy shit, look at that. Well, I, I have a couple of uh, ways that I see how that could have happened, except one thing still bothers me a little bit. But, <clears throat> well, first of all, there was a scene in Bambi, uh, Snow White, yeah, with creatures in the woods and they had glowing eyes. Yeah. So, I mean, that was done in 1930, you know. So, it's been around for a while. Second of all, creatures of the night, nocturnal creatures, have glowing eyes. That's nothing new. I did blue. I know that children's book cover is blue. I did blue because it connotes nighttime. In my mind, you know, make it blue. Nighttime. So you didn't, you didn't have to look at anybody's other work or steal that idea. That's just, to me, a cliche. It's just automatic. They want to look, make it look like night. You have, you know, blue, blue, black, you know, blue. The, 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 the coincidence that blows my, none of that coincidentally bothers me or blows my mind. It's just a natural progression could have happened to anybody. I mean, you know, glowing eyes, nocturnal creatures, snow white, blue is nighttime. All of that shit is, yeah, so what? But uh, the typeface is so similar. They're similar, yeah. And the title is crazy. crazy. <laughs> that I can't figure out. So, well, um, were you involved in the in the re uh, re edition of the mid '80s with uh, the non makeup version of the band on the cover? I think I did that, yeah. But oh, again, it was a case of here's the picture. The picture uh, was taken. The picture was taken by Niels Lotzauer, a famous rock photographer. And I think it was done on the top of uh, the California. Yeah, it was done on the, the at the top of their either their studio that were where they were recording or the record label. I can't remember. I, I read I read about it. Uh, that's my memory too. And, and then uh, and then your friend Vinny did the back cover, and they had uh, the with the girl's ass. Yeah. Yeah. And they had to, he said they had to cast models <laughs> models asses. For a whole afternoon. I can't. Right. What year was that? 1985. 85? Yeah. And the reason was basically because they thought Creature was a good enough album that got kind of overlooked because they lost all of their popularity by then. And even though the album was good, it didn't do as well sales wise as they, as they expected to do. So they said, we need, we need to give it another chance. So they released it with the non-makeup version. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was the reason. But yeah, I know, I did it. We did it. Um, whatever, Vinny did the back, you're right. Uh, well, he did the photo. Uh, I don't think he did the mechanical. No. Or the, the design part. But, no, uh, that was probably you, right? I think I think so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, were you any in any of the Creatures of the Night photo shoot with Vinny with the Egyptian makeup? No. 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 And really, I don't know how long he was with the band. A few uh, months, uh, for Creatures of the Night, just a few months. Where I remember when he was hired to be with the band and he, they brought him into the art department and introduced him to me. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I remember meeting Mark St. John the same way. Came in, here's our guitar play, hey, nice to meet you. And I met Vinny that way and um, the job he just wasn't player. around and he wasn't around. No, the, the job of the guitar player for a few years from 1982 to 1984, was a revolving door. Yeah. So anyways, uh, well, thank you, Dennis. This was great. Um, again. Uh, All you uh, KISS fans who have been watching this video. Yeah. 
I want you to count how many times I had to relight my cigar. I'd be curious. <laughs> Two dozen. <laughs> so, okay, so next one, uh, next episode is going to be Lick It Up. Oh, you, Claudio. Oh, yeah. This, ladies and gentlemen, Claudio Bergamin, original art reproduced on this t shirt, a gift from Claudio. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. Colors. I, I love this illustration, and I think on the shirt it looks dynamite. Color separation by Claudio as well. There you go. You're right. <laughs> For all you designers who uh, want to learn how to do color separation, anybody can do it. There's not, <laughs> there's not much to it. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll see you next time, Dennis, with Lick It Up. What are we going to talk? Oh, Lick It Up? Yes. Not much to say. Not much to say. All right. Bye, everybody.